Are you always coming up with ideas? Do you marvel at successful business owners? Do you hate being told what to do? Ever take things apart just to see how they work? Are you a dreamer? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, this podcast is for you. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Enclave with Kevin Wortham. The podcast that focuses on building, maintaining, pivoting, planning, and investing in you, the entrepreneur. But first, a word from our sponsor. Tapes' Specialties is the world leader in tape manufacturing and specialty conversion with over 40 years of experience. In addition to our pro brand of high-quality specialty adhesive tapes, we provide contract converting services that help improve your profitability, streamline your supply chain, and reduce inventory cost. We offer the most complete range of converting capabilities in the industry, such as... Cloth tape, double coated tape, specialty tape, paper tape, masking tape, vinyl tape, carton sealing tape, adhesive transfer tape, duct tape, phone tape, electrical tape, filament tape, foil tape, reflective tape. And the tape just keeps on rolling. Visit us online today at www.protapes.com or call us at 800 345 Pro Tapes, it's just how we roll. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another fantastic episode of the Entrepreneur Enclave, Life's Coming Attraction. I am your host, Kevin Wortham. Today, we are going to finish up part two of what I thought and what will continue to be a wonderful conversation. Part two, Brother Jock Howard, welcome to the scene. How are you, my friend? I'm doing fantastic, Kevin. As always, man, I appreciate any opportunity I get a chance to uh, talk with folks about, you know, what I do yes, and, um, and, and and an opportunity to share so that people can be encouraged. So thank you for the opportunity. So, so the last time that we were speaking, you were giving me a litany of all the things that you're involved in. I said, hold up, hold up. Let's unpack that. So today for part two, we're going to impact. We're going to unpack all of that, brother. So what's the okay. first thing that you are involved in? Sure. Well, well, let's let's start with this. Um, uh, um, so Jacques Reach R E A C H yes. um, is the uh, business model that I've designed. Um, Reach is an acronym that stands for Recreation, Environment, Art, Civics, and Health. Um, I like to go back to when I was a kid. Um, I was I was of that you know that. Uh, that demographic that went to school, public school, and they said, okay, here's a list of what you have to decide what you want to do when you're like 15 years old. So I got a piece of paper that had a couple of jobs on it. I'm, I'm, I have no idea what any of those things are and what they entail. I'm a teenage boy. Yes. Um, so, so that was like a trauma that happened to me as a young person because it was almost like I was put into a box. Gotcha. So for many years, I was so concerned about, hey, I, I want to do all of these things, but everyone says I can't. Yes. So now that I'm in a situation in the space as an entrepreneur that I don't have to listen to those things yes. is why I designed a Jacques Reach, which is a media, I'm really a media and a community organizer. Yes. And with that Jacques Reach Recreation Environment, Art, Civics and Health is where I focus on on um, the different categories. I usually, yeah, I usually take um, things that I'm passionate about and try to bring them to the larger audiences that I'm, I'm with or um, things that catch my attention or that I feel the community you know, could benefit from yes. that. And then, and then I'll, you know, work, design a program, try to get some information out, et cetera, from there. Okay. So give us, give us the first, give us the, I guess the first one, so, the first leg of that, of the, of the, of sure. reach, of reach. Awesome. So, um, recreation and under recreation, I'm focusing on two main entities. Um, both of them are around the idea of complete streets and mobility for human beings. Yes. So it, under recreation, I am currently the president of Trenton Cycling Revolution, which is a nonprofit organization that focuses on bicycling, well, it's rolling, bicycling, uh, wheelchairs, et cetera, um, transportation. Okay. And then, in addition to that, I'm, I'm also um, working as the lead to have an outdoor skate park built in Trenton. Okay. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, wow. 
Wow. So now, are you involved in the outdoor skate park that that's currently happening over at the Ellsley? Not Ellsley, but in Catwater Park. Yeah. So what's going on there is roller skating. Yes. Um, I'm I'm working on uh, skateboarding, uh, gotcha. building an outdoor skate park, gotcha. and this outdoor skate park um, will be uh, if if it's completed the way that the preliminary ideas are, it will be a destination site, and Trenton, New Jersey, would be a destination site for some of the best skateboarders in the country and in the world to come visit this location. Um, wow. The idea is to have it built um, by Antico Square right along the Assunpink Creek. And that's in the East uh, Ward, or excuse me, that's in the East Trenton neighborhood over yes. by the train station and the farm. Yes. Also the new um, uh, African-American uh, burial ground uh, cemetery. Yes. Um, it's over in that area. So, so there's some really big plans to have the East Triton area become, you know, a really finally to have a lot of uh, emphasis and work poured into that neighborhood because it's been, you know, it's just, it's been years. It's been taken advantage of for yes. years. Yes, sir. Um, yes, so sir. this project is part of that, and there's a lot of moving parts to it. But um, from the community's um, standpoint, um, I'm one of the folks who put together the original idea to have a skate park built there. So um, um, I, I've got it all documented um, because it's important, the work that we do as entrepreneurs, to make sure that we document it, um, that we can talk about it. Um, because things like this uh, usually get very big, very fast, and it's easy to lose control over it. Absolutely. And for it to look like it, and for it to look like it was one entity or one person who put it together when it really wasn't. Yes. So. Gotcha. I love it, man. Much success on that one, and keep me posted on that one. And so, what's the sure. what's the next one with the E? Sure. So with the environment, um, for many years, I've been hosting and uh, coordinating and participating in cleanups of various sorts. Um, those cleanups uh, usually um, started around the MLK Day as a day of service. So I've got a Facebook page along with Will Fossey that's called the MLK Day of Service. And uh, we've been doing that for many, many years, uh, just doing cleanups, etc. But it's transitioned now to uh, include um, my advisory work um, about the water and about stormwater runoff and how um, in cities like Trenton, um, oftentimes the environment is overlooked as, as a subject that, um, as a subject that focuses on who's being displaced or who's disadvantaged. I say that because here in Triton, when it rains, we have several homes and neighborhoods that are very affected by stormwater runoff, flooding their basements and things like that. And if those things aren't taken care of, it just leads to more issues, health issues, building issues, transportation issues, et cetera. So uh, through the environment, um, working with some organizations to start looking at rain water mitigation? Um, do we have the proper drainage setups here in the city? When we do repaving of streets and things like that, are we paying attention to uh, stormwater runoff and how that's going to impact uh, residents and so forth? So that's a much bigger project that I'm working on, yes. um, but I am working with a few other entities. Um, Delaware River Keeper is one of the organizations that I've chatted with on many occasions um, to bring information to uh, residents here in Trenton about their responsibilities, also about, you know, the laws um, that they're uh, protected by to make sure that, you know, the municipality is doing everything they can to make sure that um, folks are staying safe. Wow. Interesting. I love it, man. Yeah. Now, if, if, if I, if I learned anything in school based on what you just said, reach, that that means that there's the, the A is next, right? Yeah. Okay. The, the, <laughs> yes, it is, okay. my man. Woo, you had me nervous there for a second. I said, I can't mess up with, <laughs> with, with spelling in public. All right. So the A is next. Tell me about the A. <laughs> sure. So so um, my, my real passion is art. Yes. Um, I went to school for fashion. I've worked with some of the biggest players in the garment industry. For many years, I've worked with Jones, New York. Yes. I've also worked with Ralph Lauren, The Limited, The Gap, Lane Bryant, Macy's, J.C. Penney. Um, you know, I've done a bit of everything from retail, warehousing, sourcing, distribution, all the way up to being on the design floor. So okay. art is, you know, one of my passion, my passion plays. Okay. Um, so in the garment industry, I really learned to, to work with 
planning, you know, 18 months, two years ahead, et cetera. Yes. So whenever I'm thinking about things, I'm always processing it that way. Like, hey, not this season, but what's it look like next season? And um, how can I, you know, design things or, or et cetera. Now with the art component, I do make art but I don't consider myself an artist. Um, in the art component, I really like to focus on the others whose art I like. Um, I'm really pushing for folks to be more outspoken in uh, creating their own art collections, um, having their own art investment. Yes. Um, I say that because here in Trenton, um, there's plenty of artists that are fantastic and fabulous and will their value of their work will go up. But um, oftentimes we don't know that there's an opportunity for us to invest in that yeah. type of, you know, that type of model gotcha. and to support the artists. So with the art component, um, I'm highlighting artists from all different genres. That includes visual artists, um, musicians, architects, uh, et cetera. And then also working to design a, an arts marketplace where the artists can come together, where artists who are not um, may not have their business acumen together, yes. they can come and they can learn how to do that or they can pay a, a a minimal fee to get the services together and then start, you know, helping them sell their work. Um, I've got this wonderful building hub 13, 13 West front street, which is 7,000 square feet. We've got, you know, some, as far as art goes, we have some of the most wall space in the city. That's a privately owned building. Okay. So we're looking to showcase and highlight as many local and regional artists as possible assist them with, you know, getting their business plan and their license together and taxes and all those things. And then encourage people in our networks to, hey, buy these people's work because the sooner we can do that, it's going to get them to a space where their work is going to be more expensive and that increases the value of what we've purchased. I love it, man. I love it. Wow. Thank now, you. Now, with that particular project, are there any collaborations? Are you working with Artworks? Yeah. So um, with the with art, for example, um, it's super important to always think about collaboration. Yes. I think that here in Trenton, that's one of the issues that we have is that we have a lot of creatives, but we don't have a lot of ingenuity. Yes. Um, I think um, I've served on the board for Artworks for many years. Um, I've been affiliated with the organization since I came home from college. So that was back in the early 90s. Yes. Um, so I've done things. I've been a, uh, a paid employee from them, a paid consultant, um, served on the board, um, helped them, you know, transition through a couple of different, um, you know, trying times. Yes. And yeah, indeed, they're, they're, they are what's considered the visual arts organization for the city, which is super important. Yes. But I, I think that Artworks and many of the other nonprofits um, have an opportunity to be the tip of the point and to move the needle forward. Uh, with that being said, I think that many more nonprofits should consider how they can buy the buildings that they're in yes. and then use uh, different pilots uh, payment in lieu of taxes to offset the costs that they put on the city. Um, I say that because unless a nonprofit organization is pouring back into what the community needs, yes. they're really just taking and taking. They don't pay into the services. They don't pay into the roadways. They don't pay into the salaries. Generally, they're not paying any taxes or anything. And they've got this building. And unless the programming is very specific for the immediate community, the balance isn't equal. Understood. Interesting thought. That, that, could, mm -hmm. that could be a whole separate podcast in and of itself. Because oftentimes I've said I've, I've never been in a town, a city, where there are so many not-for-profits, it makes your head spin. Yes. But yeah, um, and I would love to actually have that conversation with you and many others, because that's, that's actually true. I believe that Triton's economy is poverty, yes. and I do not know of a successful city that has poverty as their economy. Yes. Very true. And I, and I don't think what you just said, people truly understand that. And yeah, I, they, and, and I don't want to cut you off, but I want to be honest with you. I've said it to many, many elected officials, yes. current and in the past, yes. and they all look at me like I'm crazy. Like they have no idea even what I'm talking about. Oh, they, and that's a problem. Listen, they know exactly what you're talking about, but for them to listen and to respond in a positive manner to what you're saying, that means that they know something 
that they just don't know how to respond to or they know that they don't know how to respond to this and they don't know what to do with this, right? Because everybody And maybe possible, yeah. Everybody's using the tried true method. Vote me in, let me go to Washington, let me go to to the state government, let me get more money to kind of glaze this over. But I don't want to do real projects that's going to remediate this concern. So, no. I don't know. Cuz I cuz I know last <laughs> time in the podcast we were we were talking about elections you know could we call it something different because with the amount of people that are living in the city of trenton versus the amount of people that come out and vote is it really is it really elections or is it like a a, you know like a popularity contest right (laughs) yeah yeah and i think that what you're saying leads right into c which uh, stands for civics and civic engagement um so the civic portion of it is i i think we don't have enough people who are fully vested in this community. I think that people um, have this idea that they're going to reach this point and then leave Trenton and go someplace else and it's going to be much, much better. Well, when I talk to folks and explain to them, I say, yeah, that's that's probably an opportunity if you're able to level up like that. But if you're living in Triton and you paying rent or your mortgage and it's 1200 or 1500, let's say less than 1500, where do you think that you're going to go and get the level up? for less money or the same money. (laughs) Now you might, you might be able to get like in Trenton, you might be able to get a house for 1500, but I can almost assure you, unless you're connected to someone, you're probably not getting a house for $1,500 in a place where it's got a better school system. It's safer. um, There's green grass and your neighbors are going to love you and all those different things. That's just not how human beings work. And I want to go down this rabbit hole a little bit because I've, I've been having this conversation with a lot of friends lately. I believe that we need to love our neighbors like ourselves more. Absolutely. And I say that because if your neighbor is next door to you and something happens to them, that is going to be a trauma on you. So the sooner we recognize that, hey, we need to be looking out for each other, we need to be in communication with each other, we need to be helping each other. If I got a little bit extra, instead of me hoarding it or driving across town to give it to somebody else, maybe I ought to just knock on my next door neighbor and see what they have. Because in the zip codes, we are all the same. Yes. which is why redlining is such a thing. And I know I'm going down the, the, the rabbit hole big time, no, but that's good. what this is about. We have to think d- deeper. We are human beings. The racism, the sexism, the classism is all about colonialism. Yes. And we all know that it's wrong. It's just that now there are more people who are recognizing that, hey, I've been categorized just like the people that they told me to hate. Yeah, you're <laughs> so, 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 so for example, here in Trenton, if you're here in Trenton and you're living in one of them 086 zip codes, yes. the federal government looks at us all exactly the same. Some yes. may make a little bit more money. Some may not. Yes. Some may have a house with 10 people in it. Some may have a house with two, yes. but we are all in the same boat. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, now, how come we don't have many more people um, like Jock Howard followers? How, how come we don't have that? Well, I think that we have lots more. Oh, I think okay, that okay. I, yeah, I think I think we have lots of people like me. But you know, I think that I I had some you know c- circumstances, some health issues, and things in life that made me pull back yes. from being a you know a corporate executive and you know working sixty seventy hours and just coming home to you know think about how we can move to a different house or a bigger house or okay. you know those types of things. I think that all those folks are here. And I think that many of them are enjoying themselves and don't consider this that bad and they're trying to get out. Um, But I think that we need more people to just be engaged at whatever level it is that their engagement is. You know, um, you know, we've got like, I mean, just when we start doing the simple things, like why can't we make sure that every school is safe? And when I say every school, I mean, It's clear of trash, the trees are trim, the lights are on, people know they can't speed by it, all those types of things. That's just communication. Yeah, common sense. That's just, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Kevin. Yes. Yeah. 
I, and um, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to transition because no, I could talk forever about the civics. No, so no. H, mm-hmm. yeah. So H is um uh, for health, and under health, I'm focusing on two key areas right now with the third coming online. Yes. Um, area one is mental health, and and that's for a multitude of reasons, um, but because it's also an area that um. People of color oftentimes don't talk about, and black people definitely don't talk about. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so we've go, and, and we're often the ones who are living in the most trauma. Yes. As I, you know, do research about what you know PTSD and 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 all the other SDs are. Yes. it's generally just being a black person in this country. Mm-hmm. You know, the living in poverty, fear of police, mm-hmm. issues with health care, food desert, um, it, living in a city, it's got issues with no trees, there's no wildlife. All those different things add up to developing us in these issues with mental health that lead to other triggers. And those triggers could be, you know, um, self-medication, violence, lack of communication. And then that's a whole nother trigger thing. Something, someone's getting arrested. Someone's getting locked up. All these other things, because we know, in my opinion, police are real quick to lock up people of color before asking a lot of questions, Absolutely. especially in this region. Absolutely. Um, so mental health is a focus um, with a hyper focus on bringing men together um, to talk about mental health issues and some different strategies so that maybe we're, we're handling things a little differently. Um, I am a my mother and my grandfather. Um, both died from Alzheimer's and dementia. Oh, yes. So there's a pretty good chance that that is what's going to, you know, affect me a bit as I get older. Yes. So with that being said, I'm looking at strategies to bring awareness to uh, people of color, uh, in particular black men like me, yes. about, um, you know, Alzheimer's, dementia. And at the same time, asking questions about our um Asking questions about our family history, yes. because you know there, you know, cousin so and so who's been up in the in the third floor never comes down. Those types of things. There's an issue there, yes. and we've been, I think, allowed to let um, bad or not bad to have questionable behavior become okay and acceptable. Yes, and I think a lot of it is just having conversations and explaining that hey, this is could be what it is instead of trying to talk to somebody you know maybe you need to speak to someone who's a professional someone who doesn't know and finally uh under health is cannabis uh cannabis and medical marijuana for many people i try not to use that term because marijuana is a is a is a is a racist term in general (laughs) but yeah but with cannabis i am a medical marijuana patient i believe this plant helped to save my life Yes. Um, I use it on a regular basis and, and I consume it in various ways. Yes. Um, it helps me to uh, remain focused, attentive. Okay. Um, it really assists with the chronic pain yes. that I have. Uh, and uh, it allows me to sleep comfortably and peacefully yes. at night. Because so, I've because I've put the time in the education to learn about you know the different cannabinoids and and how um, it affects my body and how it can be part of my regimen um, to help me continue to be you know as best that I can be feel as good as I can be. Now let me ask this question: Could could cannabis save the city? Could cannabis resurrect the city? Hallelujah! I'm glad you said that, brother, because <laughs> I've been out front. Yes. I've been out front talking about this for a few years. And I want yes. to give a huge shout out to my two business partners, Damon Williams and Phil Flip Charles. So Black Cannabis Enterprises, um, yes. we, uh, we are nationally recognized. Um, Trenton is a hot spot for cannabis. Trenton is, is a hot spot for cannabis superstars. A lot. You got to hear Johnson. You've got um, Leo Bridgewater. You got the guys at Woflow, NJ Weedman. Trenton is nationally recognized as having some bad, bad cannabis people involved in it. Wow. So, so, you, you um, wouldn't, you wouldn't know that though. <laughs> well, that's again, that goes back to what I was saying in the first episode. I don't think that what we have is a political solution. What we have is, is people who are really unaware. 
um, yes. about what's going on. Um, this is a 23, a, approximately a $20 billion a year industry. Yes. $20 billion with a B. Yes. And we have elected officials who are, for lack of a better word, pussyfooting around with this idea. Yes. The whole idea behind cannabis uh, uh, legislation was that the municipalities could design what the laws look like. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if the municipality said, hey, everybody who comes in, you've got to hire all the people from local. They have to be Trenton residents, etc. All right, you've got to pay XYZ in taxes. Yes. Any of those things the city government could have designed. But instead, we didn't put any focus on that, but we were just focusing on, oh, don't do this, don't do that. Uh, you can't have it in this location. You can't have it in that location. All the while, all of this commerce is already going on. Yes. I think Trent has six or seven dispensaries right now that are operating. But we, but we and, don't have any downtown, and, do we? No. Okay. Well, no. We, well, we have places. We have places that are distributing, but we don't have any that have the New Jersey state license to operate. They're gotcha. operating as businesses in the city of Trenton and distributing, you know, cannabis, but they don't have the state license gotcha. and the city approval to do that because the city delayed so long to start to put together the cannabis regulatory commission, which. I believe they had that in place now. So now we can start moving forward where uh, cannabis companies and ones who want to come into the city now have a board that they can go to who they can present what they want to do, who can then decide, yes, this is something that we would like to have you be a part of. Yes. Um, many other municipalities have taken a, an approach. Um, for example, Hamilton said they're not going to be able to dispense in Hamilton, yes, but they will let you grow. So Hamilton has taken the warehouse approach. So gotcha. with the sprawling properties and things they have there, they're getting millions and millions of dollars um, because they have warehouses where people are growing cannabis indoor. Yes. Um, again, opportunity that we could have had here in Trenton if we had an educated um, legislative body mm -hmm. about the processes and what the opportunities were, but we didn't. Um, you know, maybe Trenton will get on board with consumption lounges, and consumption lounges would be, you know, similar to places where people you could go and they're 420 friendly. You can go yeah, yeah. in there and you can smoke and you can consume. Um, maybe that's something that, that we could take advantage of um, as, as a city. Um, but I also think the bigger picture is hemp, H-E-M-P, yes. the non-psychoactive portion of the cannabis plant. Um, that has the ability to create tens of thousands of different products yes. um, from uh, building materials, clothing, paper, ropes, all those different things. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, growing uh, hemp or cannabis that is the non-psychoactive uh, product it actually helps to clean out the environment, like the ground and so forth. And oh, it's wow. a quick crop. It's, yeah, it's only like, I think, nine months long. Yes. So literally every year you're, you're having this ability to grow this product, to process it. Um, you, you, the, the oils from it is what the CBD is. Yes. So you can use the byproducts from that to, you know, for, um, you know, vaping, consuming, you know, uh, topicals, any of those things. Yes. So these are all opportunities and so forth that I hope that the city of Trenton explores. Um, I am going to, if I can, to make sure that as many people who want to be in the cannabis space in whatever that space is, maybe you don't want to touch it. Maybe you want to have a distribution. Maybe you want to come up with product placement or you want to come up with packaging ideas. All those are industry opportunities for people here in Trenton to get involved. And uh, through Black Cannabis Enterprises Hub 13, uh, 13 West Front Street, we're going to be encouraging people to come by have a conversation with us. Let's talk about it. Uh, we'll connect some of the dots. Um, the people that we're going to connect you with are people who are in the industry, yes. um, who we've got a relationship with. So some of that um, try and see you won't have to go through because we'll do the processing for you. Doc, listen, that is a fantastic note to, 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 to end on. But, man, you are so informative Listen, the platform is always open to you, man. I love this conversation. So listen, let's do this. How can people reach out to you if they want to hear more about you and get in contact with you and all the work that all the great work that you're doing for the city of Trenton? Oh, man. Thank you so much again, Kevin. Again, I appreciate the opportunity. Yes. Um, the best thing for people to do is to uh 
find me on social media. So on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, I'm Trenton365, and that's the numbers, 365. Yes. You can reach out to me. Just hit me up there. Um, DM me. Um, generally, what, what we do is we have a brief conversation. Um, we can do it over the phone. We can do a Zoom, usually 15 minutes or so. And then from there, um, we discuss what you want to do, and then I'll bring the idea and the concept to my business partners. We sit down and see if it's a fit. Then we invite you in to do a presentation between the three of us, and then we try to put together what it is you want to do. And if it's something we can do, and then we draw up what the business looks like, the you know percentages, and uh, people don't need to worry about crazy percentages. We're not looking to take you know fifty, sixty percent of anybody's business. Yeah, yeah. What we're looking at is quick dollars. Uh, excuse me, quick nickels. Yes are better than slow dollars. Absolutely. So with that saying, hey, you want to give up 2% of your business to have a international media company with superstars part of it to help you, you know, take your business to the next level? Then hit me up. You know, those are the kind of things that we can do. Got or you. you can send me an email, Trenton, like the city, the numbers 365, yes. the word show, S-H-O-W, at gmail.com. And Kevin Warden, thank you so much for all that you have been doing. Yes. Um, minding our own business yes. has been uh, a, a pinnacle in the community for entrepreneurship. And uh, so thank you for the work that you have done you, and brother. for what you continue to do there as well. Thank you, brother. Jock, let's talk. Well. Tech. Hey, listen, I need 30 seconds. If we yeah. had to put a tagline on for this episode, what would we call it? Oh, man. Trenton 365? Uh, here we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Trenton 365. Yes. Civic Engagement Radio. Okay, okay. I, I, that's that's kind of long as a tagline, but I'm going to play around with it, though. <laughs> All right, Kev. Thanks, man. Well, Brother listen, I, I, I understand the business, man. Do whatever yeah. you got to do, and I look forward to seeing the finished product. All right. We'll talk to you in a minute, brother. Be well. All right, Kev. Be Thank well. Yep. Bye-bye. <laughs> That concludes another episode of The Entrepreneurial Enclave with Kevin Wortham. The podcast that focuses on building, maintaining, pivoting, planning, and investing in you, the entrepreneur. We hope you found this episode informative and enlightening. If you have any questions or comments about any of our episodes, please call 609-731-9311 or email Kevin at minding-our-business.com We look forward to joining us for our next one. Until next time.